What's up everybody, Cigar Shipper Laird Mayhew back with another cigar review and today I've got the brand new CAO Arcana Mortal Coil and Toro. Stay tuned. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back. Welcome back to another installment here at Cigar Sherpa. I, of course, am your host, Laird Mayhew. And if this is your first time here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell and all the little bells and whistles that get you notified when we put out a review. If this is not your first time back, well, then as always, welcome back to the channel. We appreciate the support. All right, so as my intro said, today I have got the CAO Arcana Mortal Coil. Now, this cigar is the first in a series of three cigar blends, okay, put out by CAO called the Arcana, and they are to highlight the, the, the more of the uh, old world cultivation or fermentation traditions of tobacco curing and cigar making. This one is starting off with the Mortal Coil and the Dominican Republic. Okay, why I say Dominican Republic is because it's highlighting the Andulo process. The Andulo process is the oldest form of tobacco fermentation in the Dominican Republic. So maybe for the second and third, they're going to bounce over to like Honduras and Nicaragua. I don't know. Okay, so I got wind of this cigar, uh, I don't know, a few months ago or a few, you know, maybe two months ago or a month ago. Um, just, it, you know, reading t cigar news. Uh, on the internet, I can't remember what it was. I usually follow the uh, cigar news on Cigar Coop. I think might be the the, the website. But I just put in cigar news in, in Google, and then I get up what's coming out and who's doing what. And I seen it, but you know, traditionally CAO is one of them companies I don't get excited about. I mean, I smoke their cigars um, every now and then. You know, I, yeah, I've I've smoked a bunch of their cigars, and you know, like a long time ago when before I believe. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to misspeak because I'm not sure if they used to be their own company and they sold to General. But I remember when the Brazilian came out. I remember that because I was overseas and I really wanted to smoke it. And I couldn't get my hands on it. I mean, we were just stuck with Cuban cigars. <laughs> like that's something good to be stuck with. But you know, when you're into cigars and you're watching all these new cigars come out, you want to try them. Anyway, I was watching. Um, I was watching Ron Real on a live podcast with uh, a lady and her cigar which is the name of the, the, the podcast, The Lady and Her Cigar. Ron Real was a guest on there. It popped up on my Instagram. I started watching it, and they were talking about the cigar. It was about, probably about the third time that I had seen the cigar mentioned by like-minded people. You know, So usually when like-minded people start talking about a, a blend and they're really pumping it, like, this is good, this is great. I think Ron, Ron Real even said that you know this would be like a top 10 cigar for this year. Immediately, I, I want to try it. I'm interested. Okay, doesn't mean I'm going to automatically like it, but I'm definitely interested and I want to try it. So I went and started looking for it. Okay, it's a CAO. Everybody should have it. My local tobacconist has almost every CAO blend in there. So I walk in there. I'm like, hey, you got the new CAO? Um, the, the Arcana, the, you know, the Mortal Coil. No one knew what I was talking about. I mean, it, you know, that, that was weird because it, I know it came out in the beginning of February. So I went to uh, about two more retailers and asked them if they had it. Nobody had it. So eventually I went to the internet and I got it from Black Lion Luxuries. Um, that's a website that sells cigars. They have a cigar month club and all that. Um, real easy. Went on there, ordered some. And I don't even remember when I ordered them. It's posted on my Instagram when I did order it. I think I got these in about three days. So big ups. Came in a nice uh, packaging. You know, it came you know, like in a, in a, it's a back in his bag with the, uh, with the Huma Smart pack in there. Like I said, it was only in the mail for like three days. Showed up in perfect condition, so I'm going to go ahead and smoke it. I got it yesterday. So again, this is the um, Arcana Mortal Coil by CAO. It's got a... Um, first, I guess, let's start with what the hell is Mortal Coil? Everybody's like, a lot of people thought that it was the uh, like an extension of the Flathead series. You know, it was all like cars and, you know, flatheads and, and gears and all this stuff. And it's not. Mortal Coil is actually an old expression of uh, kind of like troubles in life. You know what I mean? Just like goings on in life. The Mortal Coil it is once said to, or once stated, I read when I was looking it up, that to shake off the Mortal 
coil of life is to die. So you draw your own conclusions there on what that means. Um, it's okay. So again, this one is celebrating or highlighting the Andulo process, um, which is a method of taking the tobacco leaves and wrapping them in the uh, the palm leaves of the yagua, the yagua, the yagua, whatever you want to pronounce that, and and, and, and with and then wrapping it with twine and tightening it down and pressing it and then fermenting the tobacco that way rather than in the burlap pylones and then you know they're they're usually like moved around and separate you know repositioned throughout the process and I believe I read somewhere they actually used to bury these in the ground and just let them ferment. I'm not sure about that. So you might want to fact check that since they fact check everything nowadays. Um, it's got a Connecticut broadleaf uh, wrapper. It's got a Connecticut shade binder, which, which is weird. Cause I think I, what did I smoke the other day that had that? And I was like, Oh, I never had that, but I did in the CAO bones. What cigar was that y'all? I just reviewed it. Maybe the last one I did, it'll come to me. Anyway, it's got Dominican and Dulo um, fillers. Along with, let's see here, it's got a lot of stuff going on with this cigar. It's got Honduran and Nicaraguan and uh, Dominican Piloto, along with that Dominican Andulo. So the Dominican Andulo is what's going to be highlighted in this. Um, it's a beautiful cigar. It's, it's rustic, like, you know, Connecticut Broadleaf. It's kind of lumpy. Um, it's got a really cool band on it. The band looks like, I don't want to take it off yet, but, I'm you know, it's a long band. I'm going to take it off soon, but it looks like it actually coils around the cigar. It's got a triple cap, um, tight visible seams, got a slight oily sheen to it, just slight, you can see that. Got a nice feel. The smell on this thing is what is what jumped out at me initially, because the first thing I do when I pick up a cigar is I smell the, the foot of it. And it's got like this sweet, raisiny, almost maybe even raspberry. I mean, it's like a sweet dried fruit, but it's very pungent. And it almost, you almost forget to even smell the wrapper. And the wrapper is kind of like more of the same. It's just a little bit more muted. And it literally smells like a chocolate-covered dried fruit. Like a, maybe a chocolate-covered pomegranate. You know, not, not saying pomegranate stands out. But, you know, you get those little candies that are chocolate-covered dried fruits. It's very, very, very good smell. Uh, I'm actually going to have to cold draw this one. and, and uh, Or I'm going to cold draw. I'm going to let you know what the cold draw was. I ain't going to do it right now. But uh, anyway... Um, I'm gonna give this thing a cut and light and come back and tell you what I think about it. Stay tuned. All right. So I like never, um, do a cold draw or I do cold draw a cigar, but I, I don't never review it. I don't add it in my review. And I've been noticing here on, uh, Facebook, I mean, not Facebook on YouTube. Some of the cigar reviewers are with, especially Mr. Lee Mac with the stop the cold draw campaign. I don't know what that means. I never really did it. I think it's more of an inside joke, but I had to turn the camera on. And, and tell you about this cold draw. And if you smoke the cigar, you're, you're going to know. But this should make you more excited about smoking it. It literally tastes like orange marmalade. If you know what orange marmalade tastes like, it's that jam that you put on like biscuits and toast with butter and all that. And it's got little orange peel shavings in there. So it's kind of sweet, but kind of bitter at the same time. That's literally, and I was not expecting that. Now I heard it, I think it was Ron uh real that said that uh, it had a unique cold draw and no lie bro orange marmalade right right away so i'm gonna give this thing a light and come back and tell you what i think about it stay tuned mm, i'm gonna turn that lighter down i'm gonna hold that thing like six inches back just to get it lit properly probably burned a little bit too much but oh well Let's see what this thing got Medium firm draw. It's a little firm, but not enough to be like restricting. And it's got some black pepper on the retro hail. Whew. Man. Earth. A little bit of cedar, but black pepper retro hail. So if you're a retro hail, heck, retro hailing person, and you retro hail right from the jump, you can see that <laughs> I'm trying to maintain my composure here. That's got a pretty strong kick to it, but real earthy, sweet too. Mm. Smoke is already like an oily texture. I feel like that's going to probably pick up a little bit as the cigar develops, as it normally does. Got a little bit of black pepper on the palate, but it's definitely 
a long finish in the retro hell, especially. Like, it's still, like, back there karate chopping the hell out of my sinuses. Wow. I like that. A little zingy on the palate, too. I don't know what that is. There we go. Okay. Now we're starting to get a little bit of that dried fruit that you were getting on the smell of the foot. It's starting to creep in. But I'm going to let this thing develop and come back and tell you what I think about it. Stay tuned. All right, all right. We are well into the first third. Things burning really nice. It's got a nice, you know, semi-tight white ash. Perfect draw. Did I mention this was a Toro and they only made it in one size? I think in that that whole rambling in the beginning, there's just a lot of information on this cigar that you feel, I feel like you, you would want to know, so, you know, about the, the history of it and how it's done. It, it ran for five minutes. I forgot to mention it's a... It's a uh, 6.18 or 6.12 um, by 50 ring gauge, and it's, uh, it's a Toro. So, so far, I'm telling you what, I'm having a difficult time na uh, narrowing down the flavor profiles that I'm getting. It's, it's definitely, just as a basic standard profile, it's definitely very woody and it's very earthy, okay? But it's not any type of wood that I can pinpoint. It's not cedar. It's not. It's maybe more oak than anything, but it just doesn't stand out as oak to me. It just stands out as wood. It's got like a brown, sugary, sweet nutmeg spice. Okay, so it's like all runs together. Um, it's definitely got like a black pepper on the palate, and in the retro hell for sure. But on the palate, like the finish is tingly a little bit almost like I can't pinpoint it and then that sweetness in there is maybe it's like a fruity sweetness that sometimes reminds me of that initial smell that I got of that orange peel marmalade stuff but I, I think that that may be mental like that's what I smelled so now I can't pinpoint that taste that I'm getting so I'm I'm just leaning towards that but it's definitely got like a tangerine -y, orangey spicy i don't know I, I can't pinpoint it it's it's really throwing me for a loop with that woodiness it tastes unlike any cigar that i've ever smoked before i couldn't i can't say well it's similar to this cigar the smoke's starting to get like a little bit more thick and creamy now and um, there's that flavor again. I get that flavor on the back of my palate and in the retro hell at the same time. And it's very quick. And I'm, I'm going to look for it. You know what I may have to do? I may have to go. And I don't know who. I, I know that Lee Max reviewed this cigar. And I haven't watched it yet because I wanted to go ahead and get my review out um, before I watched it. Um, but I think I may have to just go see what he's thinking. Once I get past the first third, maybe I'll watch a little bit just to see. Because there's something in there that I'm missing that I can't pinpoint. I don't want to miss it. So y'all stay tuned. All right, all right, we're in the second third, and I had to take the band off. I was kind of hoping to take that off on camera so I could show you, but let me put that down. It's actually a really nice band. I like that. Uh, I really dig that uh, black and, and copper lettering, but, you know, it's one of those long ones, and it, it coils around the cigar. You know, I'm not a big band guy. Sometimes I look at the bands, like I always say, and just think how much money I could have saved, because that's an $11 cigar at $10.99 with tax. How much money I could have saved if they didn't put that on there, but it's part of the experience. They only made 5,000 boxes of these too, so it's limited run. So if you're interested in trying it, um, I suggest you get out there and uh, and purchase some now. Um, box worthy, because it's limited, maybe. Um, I'm not through with the cigar yet, and uh, so far it's not box worthy for me. But it's definitely unique. You definitely want to try. I definitely, you definitely want to try this cigar. You definitely want to try it because it's just like nothing I've ever smoked before. And so here goes the profile. Not a whole lot has changed. The black pepper is no, is now more like a red pepper. Okay, you don't you don't taste the the black pepper on the palate. You don't really taste it in the retro head, but you do get that uh, that red pepper burn, and it does leave like a nice little tingling sensation on the palate and the finish it's still earthy it's still woody the wood is now more i'm associating it more with an oak wood now but it's mixed in with that earthiness there is that dried fruit okay um the dried fruit is like a raisiny but more like a plum to me that's what comes to mind like a dried plum uh the spice on this is still nutmeg 
It's like a brown sugary nutmeg. That's what I'm going with. That's what I wrote down. That's what it reminds me of, like a brown sugary nutmeg spice. And there's like a there's a vanilla flavor too. Like like not vanilla ice cream, but like like raw pure vanilla. I'm getting that in the smoke. The only thing that I'm not enjoying about this cigar so far is on the finish, on the palate, I'm getting a semi-sweet like a tangy citrus, okay? And and typically I don't I don't like that. I don't like I don't mind the citrus when I get it in the retro hail, you know, but when it's on the palate, it's just kind of like a sour um it's kind of going away now as I get more into the uh, second third. It's kind of diminishing a bit. Smoke's getting a little bit more creamy. And there's still a nuance on there that it's reminding me of something that I can't pinpoint. I don't know if it's something that I've never had, but it's different. And I have still haven't pinpointed it. So I was going to go... I was going to go and look at some reviews, but really it hadn't really been reviewed. Okay? Um, even in the... All the stuff that I found on Google was um, like explaining the cigar, like it's coming out, like a press release. It wasn't like no one's done like a, a review. No one's tasting wax crayons, pencil shavings, and, you know, grandma's perfume from 1929. I haven't seen any of that because it's fairly new. I know Lee Mac did. I'm gonna, now that I'm halfway through the cigar, I'm going to go start Lee Max and I'm going to start watching it. And maybe he's going to give me what I'm missing. So I'm going to bring it into the final third and come back and tell you what I think about it. Stay tuned. All right, all right, all right. We're in the final third. I probably could have kept going another 10 minutes before I went into the final third segment, but we're in the final third, and I've got to cut it short because the strength on this cigar has got me, <laughs> okay? So it's billed as like medium, medium to full, um, and it kind of was like a medium to full from the start all the way through, but getting past that halfway point in the final third, I'm going to say it's full strength for me. Um, it's full bodied and it's full flavored. Not a whole lot of transition, okay? Just from from the the, the last segment. Um, I will say that that I was getting like that dried fruit plum, that dried plum. It's more like it, it, that sweetness kind of deepens here in the final third. It's like a raisin, very raisiny sweet, and that's probably what comes to the forefront for me. Still got that that uh, brown sugary sweet nutmeg. It's still earthy. It's still got that uh, oakiness in the background. It kind of fades a little bit. When that sweetness comes forward. Black pepper is back. Okay. Black pepper is back on the retro hill with a with a with a red pepper finish. Okay, so uh vanilla, creamy smoke. It's got a pretty long finish, okay, but it's not a very strong finish. It's just it's it's an oily finish. And you can set the cigar down in like I think the longest I've gone without taking a, a puff or a drag on the cigar it was about two minutes when I had to go inside and, and refill my, my coffee cup. Um, but I could still taste it. And it's kind of like a breadiness, toasty breadiness right there on, on the palate that just kind of lingers with that sweetness. Still has a hint of that citrus on the finish, and that's what I don't like about the cigar. That's the only thing that I don't like about it. It's kind of sour. That missing nuance, okay? So I admitted it, full disclosure, in between the last segment and now, I went on and I started watching Mr. Lee Mack's review on it. Um, I kind of skimmed through it just to kind of see what his tasting notes were because I wanted to see what I was missing. And uh, one of the nuances that he picked up it, when he said it, it just popped into my head and I was like, money, that's it. Bourbon, okay? It's got a bourbon-esque flavor to it. It doesn't taste like you're sipping bourbon. You know, it's got that little bur It's just that kind of that smell... When you, when you take a sip of bourbon and you've already swallowed it and it's on your palate and you're kind of getting it in your sinuses, it does have, and that's probably with that, with that oakiness and that vanilla and that, that sweet raisiny plum all mixed together, it does. And when he said that, it popped in my head that that's what it was. So thank you, Mr. Lee Mac, for clarifying that for us. So if you haven't watched his review, go over to Lee Mac 912 and watch that review. So citing my sources. Anyway... Um, good cigar. I definitely, definitely recommend it. Like I said, for me, it's not going to be a box worthy stick. It is very unique. It doesn't taste like anything that I've smoked before. Like I couldn't compare it to anything. But it's a powerhouse. It's a powerhouse. It could be, you know, I, I got some things going on this afternoon and this evening. 
So I had to go ahead and knock out the review. So it's about 10 o'clock in the morning. Well, it's about 11 o'clock now. I've been smoking this thing for an hour. That's another thing. Very slow burning cigar, very well-made cigar. And uh, so again, let me just recap. It's the uh, Mortal Coil. Of course, it's got a Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper, Connecticut um, Shade binder. It's got the Andulo Dominican um, filler. And I went over that in the first segment of what Andulo meant. It's got Honduran, Nicaraguan, and Dominican Peloto fillers in it. It's a Toro. So basically, it's 6 by 50 I know it was like 6.12 or 6.18, whatever it was. Full body, full flavored, good cigar. Definitely recommend recommend you go out and try it. I got mine from Black Lion Luxuries because I couldn't find them in my shop. Um, so that's the only place that I can tell you where to go get them online. So Cigar Sherpa, Laird Mayhew, reminding you to be polite to everybody that you meet. But always have a backup plan in case things go south. And I'm out.